afternoon and thank you for joining us today for Stripe's earnings call for the second quarter ended financial year 2024. Today we have with us Arun, founder, executive chairperson and managing director and Badri, executive director, finance and group CFO to share the highlights of the business and financials for the quarter. I hope you've gone through our results release and the quarterly investor presentation which have been uploaded on our website as well as the stock exchange website. The transcript for this call will be available in a week's time on the company's website. Please note that today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and must be viewed in relation to the risk pertaining to our business. After the end of this call, in case you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to the investor relation team. I now hand over the call to Arun to make his opening comments. Thank you, Abhishek. Good afternoon uh, and good evening to everybody joining in. Really appreciate your time today. I know it's a busy earnings season, so we appreciate your time today. Um, we have uh, reported a very strong quarter. It's our sixth consecutive quarter of absolute EBITDA growth and, uh, and also at all time high in terms of revenues. Uh, just to avoid some, conf some confusion that could have occurred with our SEBI reporting, uh, I would like to mention that the 269 million rupees shown as other income is income, is income earned on IPs which are in our normal course of business, and it is not a one-off income. As the company moves more and more to B2B, its part of its business model is to license products to partners, and also would get uh, upfront payments for licensing incomes, but also for use of IP. Um, I just want that to be clarified so that there is no confusion on the numbers. Uh, having said that, uh, it's a milestone in terms of revenues for the company to have crossed 1,000 crores. All businesses have done uh, well. Uh, there has been no business that has underperformed. Uh, we provided initially a guidance as we were busy resetting the company since the last six odd quarters. Uh, and I'm pleased to confirm that all our uh, outlooks uh, are on track. Uh, one, to stay on, stay with revenue growth at 15% on continuing business. This has already been 16%. Historically, the H2 is a significantly stronger part, a stronger half of the year, and we are therefore confident to even beat the revenue growth. Um, the exit run rate of the company in this quarter on constant currency is approximately $500 million of run rate. Uh, and I think that's, that's a decent base uh, for, for those of you who follow us and write about us to consider as a, as a more reset base after course correction. Uh, we are also pleased to guide our EBITDA now to the higher end of the range. Uh, this is based on our strong order book in H2. Uh, several product approvals that we received recently including um, the critical product is Recepa, generic Recepa, which would be launched in this quarter, uh, thereby giving us confidence that we will be closer to the higher end of the range. Uh, we're also pleased to, uh, to see a significant improvement in our net debt to EBITDA ratios. Uh, we started the year in FI22 at the reset at close to eight times. We ended FI23 at 5.3 times. H1, this has now improved to about 3.3 times. And with, with the continuing free cash generation, um, we are very confident of meeting our net debt to EBITDA target of under three in FI24 as we had committed. Our network optimization program has been complete. Uh, as many of you know, and as we have guided earlier, we mothballed our Singapore unit since the last two years. Uh, considering that we have now had a manufacturing facility in, the New York, in New York. Uh, Singapore therefore became unviable for us to operate because it was mainly meant for the VA business and the government procurement programs which qualify as produced in Singapore. Uh, considering moving all our products to Chestnut Ridge or critical products in Chestnut Ridge facility in, in the US, uh, this facility had become redundant. So, this was sold, uh, although we incurred uh, a one-time loss. Uh, this, gen uh, this, gen this improves our EBITDA and EPS flow through to by almost about 60 crores a year, uh, considering that there were several, there were significant
second part of the depreciation line item included lease rents, uh, for, which is part of our Singapore asset that we acquired. Uh, this will improve both EBITDA and below EBITDA line items. Uh, all of these proceeds uh, will be used to reduce debt further, um, and uh, with a net debt reduction of 62 crores, this is in spite of the fact that we continue to invest in, with CapEx for our CapEx, for our ongoing CapEx needs in India, but also in the U.S., but also the fact that we grew the business by 16%, uh, our focus on free cash flow generation reduction in our cash to cash cycle times, which has been reduced by 30 working days approximately from FY22 uh, to now to just under 125, 126 days. Uh, and we'll further work through those days as, as our business quality improves. Uh, the business moving more and more to B2B uh, will mean that our licensing incomes will continue to grow. Um, so also will, our, will there be a reduction in our cash to cash cycles, resulting in further improvements in our tech book. Um, I would specifically, if I take regions, uh, the U.S. we guided in the last call of revenue guidance of 240 to 250 million, considering H2 is a significant part of our U.S. business uh, with our cold and flu and acute therapies and with uh, some important product approvals like the ones I mentioned in my opening statement. We are now very confident of achieving the higher end of our guidance of $250 million. Uh, with the completion and closure of the warning letters issued to Pondicherry, which was closed out last quarter, we are now expecting several product, new product approvals. And that also, and a continuing work on getting products that we acquired through the end of portfolio uh, that continues uh, to be brought to India to be more competitive, to have more robust manufacturing processes around them, approvals around them also continues to grow. Uh, the stellar performance from our other regulated markets is mainly driven by a continued growth of business in Australia, uh, the Nordic regions, and a significant uptake in our business in continental Europe, uh, consequent to a complete shift to B2B in these markets. Uh, we continue to add new partners. Uh, we continue to get several products approved, several products filed, and we believe uh, our front-end operations in the UK and the Nordics, added by a strong partnership model in the rest of Europe, will, uh, will help us drive this momentum. And our strategy, obviously, is to have the other regulated market mirroring the US market so that we de-risk uh, the, the higher dependency on the US business. Uh, we seeded the access market, the growth markets, as we call them. As you would see, that the growth markets have started to show results. We are continue. We are continuing to develop these products with these markets with increased focus on new geographies and new portfolio. And we believe in the next two to three years, uh, the growth market and access market will become as important as a market as the rest of the world, uh, the, the other regulated markets. So overall, uh, it's been. Uh, a pleasing result uh, for the quarter. A lot of the work that we have invested in the last eight odd quarters is now playing through. Uh, we're very pleased with our operating leverage, uh, our free cash generation, a gross margin improvement, which at close to 60% is almost industry high, uh, considering that we do not have a domestic business. Um, and again, the one-offs uh, in strides with all the Work that we are done with network optimization is complete. A loss pickup from our JV as we guided uh, in Stellis from our associate company, Stellis uh, from H2 will, will be very negligible. Uh, the business in H2 will be EBITDA positive. We continue to add significant new con contracts in our CDMO business in one source. And uh, we expect a close to Singji in transaction uh, as guided in this quarter. Consequently, our targeted debt reduction of about 700 crores between the two companies will fall in place, but will also release significant amount of corporate guarantees of strikes. So in all, uh, we're very close to achieving everything that we committed would be our focus. Uh, and I think we've we got the company back.
to a stage of, conti of continued growth, uh, you will see uh, significant upsides uh, in terms of new product launches. We have some several uh, nice products coming our way in the next couple of quarters, and we'll keep you posted as soon as we get those approvals and, and, and give you uh, conti continued information on market share. We continue to see uh, important uh, price stabilization for our portfolio. Uh, there are cases where we have price pressures on one or two products. Uh, we, we apply a very disciplined approach to product market share, and that's, that's not on price leadership. Uh, but because of our large portfolio of products, we can afford the luxury of letting go of pipeline of products that don't meet our margin criteria. Having said that, we have enough ammunition with products approved or under process of site changes from Indo to India for us to be more competitive. So overall, uh, a good result, uh, and we will continue to grow from here. Um, our focus obviously now is the conversion from EBITDA to free cash, and to ensure that the PAT percentages increase considering the one-offs are all sorted, solved for. Uh, so that's the general overview of the quarter. Uh, we are excited about the prospects for the second half and we continue to be very excited about one source that we announced recently uh, and we believe that there will be significant value accretion for all our stakeholders in the coming days. So thank you for your patience and uh, both Dudley and I am very happy to take any questions that you may all have. Gavin, we are good to take the Q&A. Thank you, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rohit Mundra, an investor. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, my first question is on the U.S. business. So we have sustainably achieved 60 million quarterly run rate now for our U.S. business. And I think we are very much on track for IFF 24 guidance. So what will drive the next wave of growth and how should we look at this base of 240 million uh, growing over the next couple of years? So we've, we've mentioned that uh, to maintain the kind of margins that we are focused on the U.S. market uh, we would peak out closer to 400 odd million dollars. That's our first near milestone. Um, we have all the products approved to get there. Uh, we believe that this can happen in the next two odd years as we slowly build out this business with the kind of margin profile that we are currently operating at. Okay, got it. And secondly, could you provide your view around the current competitive scenario in the U.S. market and something around the price erosion that we faced during the quarter? So I think that there is generally a, a more disciplined uh, approach in terms of pricing, both uh, with the buying universe and the selling universe. Uh, that doesn't mean that there aren't one-off irrational pricing that we see. Uh, so it's a lot better than what it used to be, but it's not vanished from the marketplace. Although the um, the product shortages are increasing, uh, but irrational pricing still continues. Uh, considering that we have a very niche portfolio uh, with over 30 products of ours in one or two in terms of market share uh, for many years, uh, we have been able to maintain these market shares and therefore we, I am not saying that we are not immune to price pressures, but it is relatively small uh, for our type of business. Thanks. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Aman Veej from Astute Investment Management. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, my first set of questions is on our uh, GLP-1 portfolio. 
So in the last last call, you had mentioned that uh, we had made some solid investments in devices and are a leading drug device uh, player globally. So uh, I would uh, like you to elaborate more on this part. So are we saying that we have started manufacturing these self-injection drug delivery systems also, which is required for GLP-1? So, so the GLP-1 is part of Stellis, which is an associate company of Strides. Uh, we currently have about 15 customers, and we partner with several companies worldwide. For, and we have filed uh, all the uh, weight loss and diabetic drugs, which are in drug device formats. Uh, not only Vigovi and Ozone Pick, but a lot of other other programs too. Um, so to answer your question, we are in a very strong position. But the patterns for this start going off partially in FI25, and the main patterns get off only in 2030. So commercial supplies will not start quickly. But having said that, we do a lot of R&D. We do get a lot of R&D income, and, and we do hold a very large order book for our contract manufacturing opportunities led by GLP in one source, which is a company that we just announced as a carve-out in the last quarter. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, that's one that clarification was left on the uh, this uh, comment of leading drug bill and device uh, manufacturer globally. So you are saying we have started manufacturing this uh, uh, the devices, the drug delivery system, self injections in that uh, subsidiary one so. Yes, what I am saying is that we have already started manufacturing products for several customers who have made their filings with the regulators. And once their products get approved, and when the patent regime opens up, we will start commercial production. At this time, there are development and filing batches that we have done for companies. Sure, sir. And uh, you mentioned there are like 14, 15 customers, and last call, I think it was also mentioned that uh, they have given some kind of rough feasibility of around $300 million uh, number in the next two, three years. So, according to your estimate, these uh, 14, 15 customers uh, will have what kind of market share combined? Uh, can we, as a uh, as a they, as a CDMO partner for them, can can this feel like a 10, 20, 30 percent market share opportunity for us based on? We can't, we can't predict market share on behalf of our customers. A model as a CDMO is to do services. And if our customer wants capacities, we either they reserve those capacities on a take or pay basis or a contract. And based on based on certain sensitivities that we do on these forecasts, we are, we believe that our peak revenues uh, will get to about 300 odd million dollars in the GLP programs. But that is dependent on our partners getting approvals, but also when we can actually start selling, given the patent regime in various countries. So I can't give you more specifics beyond that. Sure, sir. And you said initial sales uh, will happen some part in F25. So uh, my understanding is I think this is you are mentioning for liraglutide, right? So liraglutide sales, FI25, FI26, can it be uh, like $50 million kind of sales or it will also take time to come in? Sales will commence, but I'm not willing to put a dollar number. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, just one final clarification on this part. So we used to have a tie-up with the uh, uh, international peer known as Oman Momfred uh, for this uh, drug delivery devices. So given now we have it uh, in our own subsidiary, so uh, that tie-up is no more valid or we'll do both the things? We'll have tie-up with international platform companies as, as well as we'll do... Oman Momfred is not a platform company, it's a device manufacturer. We have several yeah. device manufacturing manufacturer partnerships. So they make the device, we make the drug device. So we put the drug in the device. Okay, so devices we are not making for any of our products? So you need to get back in the queue because there are other people waiting to question. Okay, sure, sir. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may please press star and one. We have the next question from the line of Shantanu Maheshwari, an investor. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. My question is regarding the other regulated markets performance, which has been quite strong. 
And we have mentioned in our other regulated market slides in the investor presentation that we have a strong funnel for the European B2B partnerships under the Synerge ICE to drive growth. Uh, can you please put a little bit of light on this? So Synerge ICE is our B2B, the name of our B2B platform. Uh, it's a platform that sells uh, capabilities for both one source and for strides under one platform so that we offer multiple services to a customer. And Synergize is only a logo of a B2B arm of Stripes. And uh, we partner with major companies in Europe and out-license our products, and that is how we get licensing income, uh, profit shares, and all of that. And Synergize is the name, is the logo that we use for customers to, to differentiate our B2B business from our B2C business. Got it. Noted. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. We have the next question from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Right. Thanks for taking my question. Arun, uh, just uh, leading back to your earlier remark, uh, just to reconfirm that you said the U.S. business sales for us can be $400 million in the next couple of years? Yeah, I mean, if we, I'm saying that if we want to do this calibrated, disciplined approach for uh, U.S. business, in spite of us having so much of approved pipeline, we will believe that $400 million is the right size for us to keep the margin profile that we currently achieve in the U.S. and also to have a backup when we are challenged on certain products. Right. Uh, so, I mean, but uh, by when do you see uh, getting to this $400 million mark, sir? I would assume not later than two financial years from now. Perfect. That's helpful. Secondly, uh, you know, in terms of some, you, you mentioned about uh, some meaningful launches being there in the second half of the year. Uh, I mean, is there a number that you have in mind, uh, you know, and, and these launches are what? Are we talking about meaningful launches of more than $20 million products? Yeah, I mean, uh, Nathan, we have moved, moved up the ante in terms of our average product range being five, four to five million dollars to now products delivering more than 10 to 12 million dollars. Uh, but we do have, I mean, you will appreciate that Recipe itself should be a about 20 million dollar product by default of the size of the market opportunity. Um, and there are several other products that would come our way very soon. So yeah, we should have three, four products which are 20 million and above uh, by the end of the year. I mean, exit run rates. And then I guess just to sort of explore the fair to assume that, you know, bulk of the revenue uh, realization from these products should be visible next year, depending on at what time of the year uh, in the second half they really hit the, uh, hit the market. Okay. And secondly, on, uh, on uh, you know, the opting leverage which is inherent in the business, uh, with the scale-up that we're talking about in the business, uh, I mean, again, is it fair to assume that, you know, we've, we've been reasonably consistent with our overheads position now over the last two, three quarters. So does this uh, $200 million uh, sort of analyzed run rate for overheads sustain and then whatever incremental uh, gross profits we make sort of flows with the beta in fact? Yeah, you're right. So we don't believe our OPEX levels are going to increase greater than $200 million for several years. Uh, and that is because of a very keen focus on um, costs, and also a lot of things that we do in terms of optimization, OPEX leverage, and OE improvements in our plants. Uh, having said that, the only variable would be the freight and associated warehousing costs uh, for increased revenues. But for that, the flow through from gross margin to EBITDA could be strong. And uh, we believe uh, that would be the singular point, uh, pointer towards improved EBITDA margins. And if I just take it forward, uh, I mean, what does it really imply for your EBITDA targets for this business X of, uh, you know, the, the gelatin business that you will dispose of, rather diverse to, to one source? When you look at Stride as a business, uh, you know, over the next two, three years, where can net the two EBITDA levels be for this business? Uh, you're talking about net debt to EBITDA levels, or you're talking yeah. about... Net debt to so, uh, EBITDA levels. Uh, we strongly stand by our guidance that in spite of about... 150 crores of EBITDA moving to one source, uh, 
uh, we will still achieve our current uh, EBITDA. So effectively, we are telling you that like to like our EBITDA will be closer to 950,000 crores the next year. Uh, so in spite of 150 crores of that moving away, we will still achieve uh, our current EBITDA and, and revenues. Uh, so there will be no drop in revenues and EBITDA. Uh, and uh, we believe that that in the next two years our debt to EBITDA therefore will be much below two uh, given the strong performance that we are, we are now achieving through our reset. And second question, last one. In the past, you've had, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, I mean, when you look through again the next two or three years, given the way you're thinking about the business, do you see opportunities or avenues for for meaningful inorganic growth using the cash flow that will come through, or how do you emphasize the business growth over this period of time? Well, not in the case of strike. I mean, I think I think uh, there are uh, the the cheaper assets are in markets that we probably don't want to expand expand beyond beyond the size, which is mainly the U.S. Uh, every other Markets are not necessarily cheap, so I think I think uh, and then we 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 are just sighing. You know, it's a it's a we are we are breathing a lot more easy now, considering where we started the reset. And I think we need another two three quarters of consolidation um, and reduction of debt, uh, which is what we are focusing on. I mean, we, the debt is not an overhang; it's working capital debt. And with $35 million moving away to one source, it actually becomes even better for strides to operate. But I think for the next two to three quarters, our focus would be to uh, improve our COC, which, like I said in my opening, started off at 150 or days. It's now 127. Our target is to bring that down by another 15 days uh, so that we don't have to worry about increment to working capital in spite of a 15 16% top line growth. Uh, so that's our focus. I think uh, maybe you should ask this question to us after about three to four quarters. Thank you, my best luck. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may please press star one. The next question is from the line of Sarvesh Gupta from Maximal Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Arun, and uh, congratulations on another steady quarter. So, just uh, for this clarification on that uh, U.S. business, so currently we are trending around 16% odd uh, annual growth, and while you are saying that we can reach maybe $400 million in a couple of years, so that would mean uh, around 30% CAGR. So, are we talking about doubling the growth in the U.S. in the coming two financial years? No, so basically, what I said is that you look at your, you look at our exit run rate. For us to be at 250, we need uh, the exit run rate will be close to about 280 million dollars, right? 270 to 280 million. So if we do an absolute number of 240, the exit run rate is about 270 to 280. So you calculate from there on, and it is not a 30 percent CAGR. Obviously, the U.S. growth is going to be stronger because I was explaining to Nitin. Uh, we don't have, most of our new products are in the 15, 20 million dollar range compared to our historical 5 to 7 million dollars. So that is what, that is the reason why we are upping our, our, our num I mean not, I mean reducing the time uh, while the growth on the other markets will be slower but a lot more steadier. Understood. And, and given the strong traction that we have now found in the other regulated markets, would you like to call out some sort of a guidance in terms of growth or, you know, where we want to be in the couple of years? Uh, it's too early to call out uh, a guidance service. Uh, I think uh, our idea is to grow the other regulated market as a mirrored market to the U.S. So if we, if, if our product design strategy plateaus at $400 million in the U.S., we would like the other regulated market to mirror that size. So it would take us a lot more than two years to get there, considering that currently our exit run rate is likely to be about $200 million, uh, which is almost 50% growth in the last two years. So um, we, we think that there's a lot of momentum coming there. And then, as you can see, we are also building the growth markets. 
So we have three uh, layers and uh, we will probably plateau the growth for the U.S. not because the opportunity is not there, because we may not want to grow that business beyond that, uh, because it may kind of impair the pristinity of our margin focus for that market. Um, so that's that's more it. Uh, the idea is to build the other egg markets to about to mirror the U.S. market, but that's not going to happen in two years. It's going, to, it's going to take probably four or four and a half years. But that's the idea. Can we create two or two or three mirrored markets uh, in terms of revenue and margin profile? Understood. And finally, on the exceptional items, so, um, you know, this uh, uh, facility that we have sold, it looks like uh, we have only realized maybe 50% or lower of the book value of that asset. So, any particular reason why we had to incur such sort of a sharp drawdown on the on the stated book value? Uh, so, one is that, you know, uh, it it obviously we had mothballed this facility now for a good two years, considering ever since we bought Chestnut Ridge, and post COVID, Singapore for generics just became very unviable. Um, so we had a choice to continue to mothball or just move on because, uh, like I said, our focus now is the uh, the EBITDA to cash to EPS conversion, and while we took a one-off hit, uh, this delivers close to 70 crores of margin improvements from EBITDA to PAC, and, and that made better sense to us, uh, and also from a ROSI standpoint. So we, we have completed uh, everything that we needed to do uh, to build the company for the next three to four years, and we didn't want to have any overhang or any extraordinary exceptions coming forward in the strikes system, which will not be there. Uh, I can confirm that. So it's just to just move on you know, cutting off the sidecar, which didn't probably add to the strategy going forward. Understood, sir. And this 15 crore one-off cost increase in the other OPEX, what was that, sir, in the personal cost? So we had a policy earlier where a lot of our colleagues in strides uh, were on variable pay. Uh, as part of our uh, banding exercise and other programs that we did, uh, we realized that only about 70 or 80 people make significant direct impacts to the p &L, and everybody else are subject matter experts or are very important associates of the company. So rather than making uh, variable pay a function of uncertainty for employees, especially when we are coming back from a difficult chapter, we decided to cut off the variable pay for several of these employees but added it back to their CTCs. Uh, so that is why we took a one-off. Uh, but we are now provisioning that on a quarterly basis. So you will not see this um, see this uh, regularly. And uh, the new base of uh, 185 crores is now a personal cost, which will be more or less steady state uh, going forward except for standard uh, increases on an annual basis. Understood, sir. Congratulations and all the best for the coming quarters. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions may please press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Aman Veej from Astute Investment Management. Please go ahead. Well, uh, if you can talk about where do we see our CDMO business in the next two years? So the CDMO business, uh, once one source is up and running, uh, we had put up a detailed presentation uh, we said that the business will be about 150, 160 odd million dollars uh, at launch year, which is next year after the NCRT process is complete, and we expect the business to hit 400 million dollars in FI27. information we work with partners we are we are committed to confidentialities I can't give you the kind of 
granularity you are seeking in a cdmo business no no my question is not on that side sir my question was on the uh, other product basically which is uh, terapetai so we had launched this product uh, uh, in uh, europe markets and i believe the uh, us opportunity is also coming in so uh, do we think uh, are we planning to launch uh, the same and if you can talk about sign for the europe end and other markets we are not selling this product in the us okay we don't even plan to enter after the expiry uh-huh. this product thank you that was the last question i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments over to you sir thank you thank you all for joining us today and thank you for your support all these scotters and if you have any questions please do not hesitate to call us uh, or abhishek or write to us we will be very happy to address them thank you all have a good evening thank you on behalf of strides pharma science limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines